Yeah, uh, I'm very excited. Uh, I'm here today together with my colleague Carmen. Carmen, make a wave. Hi, hello. <laughs> we are dialing in from Germany today. Um, um, my name is Jochen Göser. I'm uh, the project lead of um, Bosch Power Tools, the uh, project Agile Transformation. And my colleague Carmen is uh, Agile Master, Agile Coach in one of our major business units, actually the biggest one we have in Leinfeld and close to Stuttgart. And we want to give you some highlights today on, on our journey. First, a perspective on our Agile transformation that we have been running since almost four, four years now. Um, and we also want to deep dive a little bit on how we implemented flight boards, uh, flight levels in one of our business units, which is uh, called BI, okay? So we are very happy to be here today for the, wait one second. To be here, uh, it's the first digital conference. We are doing a keynote, so bear with us if we speak into the wrong mic. <laughs> but we are very happy to see you. Um, we would have been, of course, much better at joining uh, you guys in London, uh, but that's currently the state we need to live in. And let me give you some perspective about Robert Bosch uh, Power Tools. Uh, I mean, most of you might have heard about Robert Bosch uh, Company. We are very uh, a um, big company with very different divisions mostly known for our automotive sector, um, but the, the company or the, 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 the set division we are working for, Carmen and myself, is called Power Tools. We are a 5 billion euro sales uh, division of, of, of Bosch. Um, we sell really power tools, so the things where you drill a hole, where you on buildings, where you fix a hole, I mean, all these different things that you need on a construction sites or in a DIY project. Um, we have we are very innovative. Uh, we are also a bit special when you look at at Bosch overall because we are a consumer goods company, right? Most of our company is doing building parts for the car industry. So you probably have been encountering a lot of Bosch things in your life when you enter the car, but you probably never have known that it's a Bosch part. Uh, but for our things, it's much different because they are branded with Bosch and it's a it's a part of so. We are around 20,000 associates around the world. Um, our headquarters is close to Stuttgart, uh, but we have major regional hubs in uh, close to Chicago, in Sao Paulo, uh, in, in Joburg, South Africa, and in Shanghai. And um, the around 8,000 of our associates are knowledge workers, indirect workers. And we have actually uh, done an agile transformation um, across the whole company the last four years, and we want to give you a bit of an outlook. The, the question we get most times asked, um, how big is the transformation you're doing there? And um, the, to give you a bit of a perspective is the following. Um, when you speak about agile transformation and you guys are familiar with, with the word agility and lean and all these things, people always have certain boxes they, where they want to put in um, uh, an agile transformation. Uh, most people connect it strongly um, with, uh, with, uh, with a method, with Scrum or lean or whatever. Other people put it more into uh, having a new way of leadership, a new way of leading, which is essential actually in, in our German engineering background driven company. Um, for other people, it's a lot about how to organize yourself. So meaning how to org make the organization in a different setup. Um, and we actually wanted to make sure that this uh, transformation that we are running is actually uh, touching five different dimensions. And you see these five different dimensions in what we call these five bubbles. Um, so starting from a new definition of leadership, from a new definition of how we want to collaborate, of course, also an organizational aspect, and we really didn't uh, leave any t uh, stone untouched in this whole thing, um, uh, looking into process and methods and also in a strategy part. And what was probably um, many new, much news for, for the majority of the people who were actively try, uh, wanting to support in this transformation is actually that we asked a lot of people to actively contribute and not only contribute in a way to, um, let me say it like this, to, to work on defined work packages defined by our project team, but to really uh, create on their own how the new organization and how the new way of working should look like. 
Um, I think that's that's something um, which I, I think is for for the for Bosch quite a new thing that we did there. Um, so the, the little anecdote I would like to share with you is there when we were actually um, doing doing asking for volunteers. You know, we had a big room with twenty people who wanted to go and work with us on this transformation. Um, actually, uh, they were very disappointed the first couple of weeks when we told them you know, guys, you need to co-create with us. It's not here that you that we distribute just working packages and you fulfill a certain go-life date with this new setup. So I think that was really a, a switch. We always shared transparency on what we are working on um, and, and the empowerment I think I, I briefly mentioned. Um, so important message from this slide is it was not uh, switching everybody to Scrum switching everybody to a new, org I mean, we touched all these five layers. And in order to understand a little bit how we implemented the flight level boards, I think it's important to make a deep dive a little bit on how we organized ourselves or how we are organized nowadays. So when we speak about power tools, we are coming from uh, six different business units. And these are um, so, uh, I differentiated um, by different product categories and different user categories that we want to touch. So for you guys, probably the HG part, which is called home and garden. So this is everything what you need. These are the green products that you find in multiples or on Amazon, which is basically DIY projects, which is the lawmaker, which is all these different things that a DIY person and the blue parts, BI and BE, they are actually for the professionals. So the really the craftsman who uses our tool, the big construction sites. And then we have other smaller business, well, not smaller, AC is actually our biggest one, which is the accessories part. And we have small, two smaller business units. One is the measuring tools and one is the rotary tools. And these business units have always been very independent, meaning end-to-end -end responsibility in terms of product innovation, production sites, um, but also earnings and profit, profit and loss responsibility. But within each of these business units, we had a departmental uh, setup. So an engineering and a marketing uh, quality department. And over the last, as I said, we started in 2016. Over the last uh, four, four and a half years, we have now transformed since beginning of January 2019. All of these business units have a different setup. So we still have the, 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 the I would say, the, the bracket around as a business unit. But within the business unit, we have depending on the size of the business unit, what we call business teams. And these business teams are not, um, you know, um, part-time project uh, setups with cross-functional. These are really um, new, smaller entities that have everything that the big business units had now in small. This innovation focus, this end-to-end uh, -end responsibility, and the cross-functional setup. That actually was quite um, a culture shock for a lot of people working in engineering or marketing to be in a new home with people who are not their same functionality and with a business owner, meaning a boss that might have no clue about their background in their functional area. So this is the core of our new uh, organizational setup, um, but it's only part of the story because to understand it fully, you need to, you need to go through this uh, organizational setup. So. What I described in the previous one, the business team consists out of three sub teams. The first one is the really truly cross-functional team, which is responsible, we call them purpose team, which is uh, responsible for product innovation, for the serial, uh, mass pro uh, for the serial implementation, for facing products out and to have the really innovative parts. And um, then usually, did not only touch the indirect workers with this setup to be aligned, um, but we have also the plants, which are usually in the execution and also the value stream in the plant aligned to these teams and fixing is one name of the team. So fixing has all the products that you need to fix something on the wall, on the table, whatever. So all these tools that you need to do that. So they have responsibility, what we call end to end. Um, and you have it really down from a, from a Leinfelden team sitting there with cross-functional. And we have the two other teams sitting in, in Mischkolz in Hungary. And, but everybody belongs to the fixing team and therefore having the end-to-end -end responsibility for this part of our business. 
they are, so, however, supported by two things, by two uh, groups of people that I want to highlight. The expertise teams are the, I would say, the formerly known functional departments with a totally new uh, mindset and purpose, what they need to accomplish. Because, let, let me put it like this, at, in previous times, there was an engineering department with 50 people belonging to a functional department. All these people have been transferred over to the cross-functional team. And then certain people have been pulled back for those things that are mandatory or should be the same for all different business teams. So as an example, um, from a technical perspective, we want to use the same battery systems in all business teams. So this, one, this is as an expertise that would not be fitting in each business teams, but which would be as a service provided to every business team or the, the color coding of our products. We don't want to, to use all different colors. It should be recognized as one green, as one blue or to, to build our brand identity. But as a rough, number, a rough uh, calculation, 70% of the people who were formerly in functional departments are now in cross-functional teams. And we use the, the, our agile transformation to implement also new type of roles which are uh, probably known to you, which but were uh, totally new to a big organization like ours, which is the Agile Master. Um, so we took part, the Agile Master is a person um, that is uh, on purpose not defined to a specific method like Scrum or Lean. He, he's kind of the method expert for the teams. And he's the guy who's coaching the team to remove impediments. And there are different levels and seniority levels for Agile Masters. So certain Agile Masters take care of a team. And then you have also people like Carmen, who's joining me today, who is really challenging uh, our very senior management to adapt also to new working methods and to new leadership styles. So depending on, on the size of task, you have the very different um, challenges that you're facing. Um, design thinking coaches is a, is a very connected thing for us. Um, but as you can imagine, uh, bringing out 100 new products every year um, uh, and having a fast turnaround of these pro products in the market is key for us. So we um, trained all our associates in the indirect area with design thinking, and we have around 20, 25 design thinking coaches also working in supporting the teams to come up with totally new ideas. Yeah. Um, we, we, I'm... If I'm running through the slide, you can always ask a question in the chat function. Uh, we are trying to, to answer them as, as, as they come along. And I think that's, uh, that's really important to, to understand a little bit the organizational setup. Are there any questions concerning um, what I have spoken so far about? Okay, then I would like to go to the, oops, next slide. How much change power the Agile Masters have? Um, and Andres, uh, very good question. Um, how much power does he has? I mean, he has uh, quite a flexibility when you mean to finding the right working method. So as I said, we were never keen on saying doing Scrum, doing not Scrum, doing Lean. So over this, how the team actually works, in which way, he has actually a lot of power. Um, when you speak really about company uh, procedures, company processes, I think the Agile Masters is key because they perhaps, I mean, whatever is needed to make the single team work, they can change. But if they, that's usually only part of the game, right? If you want to change something bigger than the team, that's actually where the real need is. And there we have like in each um, business unit an expert which is called Agile Master. So for example, Carmen is leading it in one of our business units, which is BI. And she has a team of around 10 people and they supporting all business teams or purpose teams. And they together can drive a lot of change uh, in, in the company. Um, Rebecca, your question from starting small or getting uh, starting big. Um, I think we had at the beginning uh, to the best of my knowledge, we had two grassroots project teams uh, of, uh, called IXO and SAMO. So basically two teams that were getting the, the full testing 
atmosphere and the testing flexibility to test it. And then we got actually very, very strong, and that's perhaps also a, a lessons learned when you have that, a very strong support from our very senior management, so from our board of management, um, our president, and also our C-level from Bosch, to really go very broad on, into that. So we had, I think, starting a grassroots, but then a very strong, um, I would not say push because that's, but a certain push as well from, uh, from the very top. Um, and then, uh, Evangelo, you have another question to the teams, the approach, or was the approach conceived along the journey? Um, I think part of that I probably answered with the pilot and, and so on and so forth, looking at you from a communication and feedback orientation. Um, I think our senior management put a lot of efforts, not only time-wise, but also communication-wise, in telling the story, why do we need to change? Um, because we are too slow, we are too less innovations, and we are losing uh, on the market. And I think this sense of urgency was very well communicated in a, in a visionary approach. Um, and to be very honest, uh, I mean, how, how should I explain it? Uh, I mean, Carmen, you remember the time when, when Mr. Raschke and, and also Hank kind of really wanted to meet each and every person of our indirect workers to have a dialogue with them about why do we do that and what's the personal perception and how should we address the change. So I think the, the communication effort cannot be overestimated. It's, it's, it's key, especially in the, at the beginning and throughout the journey. Yeah, I agree. I would like to add something, uh, Jochen, especially according to this question uh, for feedback. And this is uh, something we started in the beginning when we started with the transformation and we did not finish so far. So normally, Every year, each business unit, it's really a huge business unit, for example, BI, uh, um, approximately 1,500 to 1,700 people. And we really do a yearly, we call it a retrospective or um, a culture day. It's not only one day, normally it's one week, uh, up to two weeks, and where you get um, certain questions, and they are for sure very similar to the questions from the year before. And you can answer and can give a feedback. And after we get this feedback, we collected it. Then we go into a very deep uh, dive uh, in those uh, feedback. We get a lot of uh, from the organization. So that is really an improvement process, never ending. In my opinion, this also fits to this change of agile transformation. It is a never ending story. And therefore you always need the feedback coming from the organization. And for sure you do it not only one time in a year, as uh, Jochen said, especially the agile masters, also, also we have agile transformers on board they are the ear and they listen really to the organization what comes from them and if there is really something very uh, crucial or very loud let me say it in this words then we take for sure care about it nevertheless when it uh, comes up then we take care of it and try to solve it yeah and, and i think what the business teams are accountable for i think we can really go do a deep dive on that Carmen, perhaps on how you organize your work within mm -hmm. the business unit involving the business teams and the expertise teams. Okay, and then I will answer this question, uh, accountability of the business teams. Uh, what you see here is really the flight level and due to the time we have really to fly through the uh, flight levels. What you see, we started, to be very honest, we started on the, on the top and we started not with a strategy board, we started with a so-called activity board. This is if you uh, know Klaus Leopold and um, his flight levels, I would say it's, it's a bit between flight level three and flight level two. But we need this because we have a lot of business units and such business units have this end-to-end -end responsibility. This means they are the business owners, they are the head of this business team, they are responsible for every innovation they take care of. So we will say from the beginning until uh, the, the tomb, they are really responsible for the whole product life cycle until we finish the product. And here on this BI activity board, you find all, really all the projects or one card is um, referring to one project from our different, from our 16 uh, business teams. So, uh, and we meet every Tuesday and every Thursday, half an hour. And the cards which had to be informed about, they are turned a bit. And now for sure they are digitalized. We use uh, traffic lights. And then we see, ah, okay, there is something um, you would like to, to inform us about or you need a decision. 
And I'm also um, able to put on a traffic light on a card, which I do not belong, but I have to remember, ah, I put this traffic light on it. I would like uh, to know this information from you. And the team who is around this board and um, communicating to each other is our leadership team. This means uh, our business unit, the board members, or the business owners, then as uh, Jochen already mentioned, mentioned, the expertise owners from the expertise, for sure all the HR masters are invited, and for last but not least, all the pro uh, product owners. And uh, to go down and um, level lower, this is really level two, when we um, uh, remember what uh, Klaus Leopold um, told us. So this is really according to a special business team. So we have business team drilling, we have business team fixing, we have business team grinding and so on and so on. And all of them have a, uh, uh, sorry, a board and they meet also you see it here two times a week, 30 minutes with the whole team. And we are now at the moment pushing a bit the, our business board members that they also uh, participate during these uh, meetings because then they learn a lot what is going on. And the same is valid for the expertise team. So each expertise team has uh, his own board and follows up his um, or her epics and tasks. And the last level, the slide level number one, this is the project team board. And this is valid or we, we have it uh, in the business teams because one business team can have, I do not know, up to 10 products, different products and different projects in that case. So they, they have also 10 project team boards and they are often organized as a scrum team and as scrum boards. The others are organized as Kanban boards and the same valid again for the expertise. And what I did um, not mention so far is this BI strategy board. We had a, for sure we, we had a strategy in former days, but meanwhile, we have really adapted strategy according to this HR mindset and, and to the HR way to work and the HR way to really to collaborate and to communicate. And therefore, uh, we now decided we have a strategy board. This is also digitalized and um, where we find our most important strategy points we uh, would like to take care of in 2020. So we also use this OKR method, the objectives and key results for 2020. And I think this is all about what I would like to tell you, what I can tell you, what I, we are really um, proud of, but uh, maybe you may smi uh, will smile. All of those boards are meanwhile digitalized. It is not really normal. We are Swabian and we like our uh, physical boards and we like to, to use the post or to pick the post-its to put it from uh, the uh, left to the right to the next phase. And this was really, it was great and we really liked it. But now, and this is really, I would say, thank you to the crisis. Now we really have everything digitalized and we are really very proud. Oh, and I have, uh, I did not change this that you can see how in former days our uh, boards uh, looked like. So far from my side and really uh, um, a very, um, it's like um, flying in the Concorde <laughs> with two M. So um, questions to that um, topic at the moment. If not, um, I think I can tell you that from, I have to check one moment, 550, we are in the Flight Level Academy, Jochen and I, and you can also ask your questions there. And I think, um, of course, when you talk about transformation and giving a keynote, we also want to be very honest and transparent what really worked and what did not work well. So we prepared this slide for you. Um, where you see on the left-hand side our success stories, where we, of course, very proud of. Um, but also on the right-hand side, the little uh, things that make us actually not really progressing as expected or as hoped from, from our side. Um, and I don't want to go through them one by one or calm and me, uh, but we really want to open up now also to have a dialogue with you on questions you might have on, on topics that we discussed, or if you wish a deep dive on any of the success stories or challenges that we are facing at the moment, and we are openly sharing what we, what we have done. So maybe if nobody likes to start or is thinking about, I would like to pick up the um, last point of this challenging, it's a never ending journey. 
this is something normally everybody says, and me too, huh, okay, it's a change and it's clear. But to be honest, if you are living in this transformation and in this in this journey, mid in this journey, you are not aware of it. And um, some weeks before I really got, made a very bad experience, I got an email from a colleague and at the, to, to summarize it, his uh, request was to go back to the former, um, to the former days when we worked in a formal uh, way, when we had really a clear structure, we had a matrix, we had um, our silos, and this was really what he was asking for. And first, I, to be very honest, I was really angry, I was really pissed, and I thought, okay, I stop here, I uh, look for another job, I really stop here, I was really, really very angry. But then I needed also some time, and then I thought, oh, no, stop, stop here. There are different... Um, reasons behind and one of the reasons is really also this uncertainty it is so far it we have a, a, a certain uncertainty uh, here we do not really know if this exactly the right way or maybe could be the right way and this is what you cannot change during a change we have to accept it and this is what i learned and so you have to go to the people and this is also a learning for me often we say it's all about people and interaction and often we forget also and this is again for me a really good lessons learned okay i have to take care especially as an agile master people are in the middle and also the interactions and this is what i have to take care of and this is a learning and again it's a never ending journey this is a special experience i learned Maybe I mean, I'm being responsible for the overall project and all the different six business units I want to highlight is one challenge that is written on the right hand side and the first spot is uh, scaling it to a holistic uh, picture across all business units. I mean, we, we didn't go in the big bang, like all six business one one go. So we did it step by step learning from each other, happening, but at, at the end, at the moment, we are struggling a little bit to get as much more alignment across the business units um, than we have been able to done in the, in the, I mean, within the last two years. And I think that's, that's something which we, we are currently working on because there are some things that are really not across, that are really across business units. And for that, we need to create a better platform. Um, Arthur, you have a question. How have you found any positive business outcomes such as quicker time to market with this approach? Um, so the, the question is, we have had positive business outcomes. Um, we have seen substantial uh, quicker time in, in going to market in certain areas. And we have also projects which are still delayed. So it's, it's uh, for those of you with a realistic picture, of course, it's not paradise what we have done here. But I think it's, it's a good step to get more transparent on where our pain points are. So we can tackle topics and delays quicker, or we also stop projects. I mean, I was talking to somebody in the measuring tools division the other week, and, and he basically said, it's actually quite good because we killed two projects, which we wouldn't have killed three, four years ago. We would have done them until the very end, they hit the market, then it would have been so much more time invested, but so much more money lost. So I think um, in certain areas, we have become quicker. In certain areas, there are still delays, but we are also quicker in, in killing projects. Mm -hmm. And I can answer the next question from Peter. Did you really get rid of all existing meetings? Yes, we really got rid of all existing meetings. And But for sure, we uh, had to schedule new meetings and we have now a communication structure. So this means uh, normally on let me think, on, on, on Wednesday and on Friday, we do not have any regular meeting, nothing, no stand-ups, nothing. All the other meetings are um, distributed to the different days. Um, this is um, the other days. <laughs> uh, and uh, this is really helpful because now nearly everybody has the chance to go into each stand-up he or she is interested in. And this is really very uh, good because so we also started um, closer collaboration but nevertheless we are not at the end never in uh, journey i will remember you but it is really very good because now i have the chance to go into exactly this and that um, expertise or a stand up of the expertises or of the, the business teams and listen and ask my 
questions. And Evan Cello. Particular metric. Uh, I, I think you, uh, in terms of uh, at the overall agile transformation, uh, no. Um, because it was very hard for us because part, I think when you remember the five bubbles I showed at the beginning, um, I think it's a bit more than just looking at one a certain metric, but uh, for us, at least for our senior board managers is also trying to do a cultural change. Um, and, and therefore we are, we are focusing on, on the metrics we need, but it's not like uh, I'm responsible for the three metrics and I'm totally fighting for them. Um, I know we are running out of time, but uh, let me answer those, or we answer the last two questions. And then as Carmen said, in half an hour, we will be in the flight level uh, coach, a uh, flight level academy um, section in Sokoko. So you can also ask uh, small questions there. As target end state, we always said it might sound fuzzy, but it led a lot of room. We wanted to be a user-centric, innovative company. And that's measured by innovations, that's measured by time to market, and that's measured also by, of course, looking at our business numbers. And the last one. Uh, I've done, I would uh, answer this more on motivation improved. Yes, if you think, uh, let me make an estimation, I do not know exactly, if you think about um, 60 to 80 percent of the employees and the rest is not really um, not really with us, they are on the way, but we also have some people, like I mentioned before, they are really completely against this uh, this change. And again, it comes uh, from uncertainty. It comes from, yeah, I do not feel really well. The environment is not, not really ready for this new setup. And so, yeah, I would say we um, had an increase or an improvement of the motivation and moral, but not overall. And this is also something we have to work on. Okay, time is good. Finished. You're a bit over time, but as I said, thanks a lot for having us. Thank you very much. Yeah, we really enjoy it. And we will be in half an hour also in the flight level area. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Jessica. Thank you. Bye.